Okay, so now we're going to go out to the internet and download the software that we need to install our servers. So we're going to go to a site called apachefriends.org. Okay, and what apachefriends.org does is they've taken all those applications that I discussed before, so the web server, the application server, the email server, the um, database server, and instead of having them be separate applications that you have to install each one and configure them and make them all talk to each other and see each other, they've bundled them all up into one neat little package that you just install once and everything is talking to each other and works and uh, it's really nice and really simple. Believe me, the uh, one-off route is very much of a hassle and uh, it always seems to get me all messed up. So I really appreciate this method. So once you're at the Apache Friends page, the uh, project that we want to look for is the ZAMP project, and that's X-A-M-P-P. So I'll click on the ZAMP project page, and as I scroll down, there's uh, several different choices that you can use to install this. There's one for Linux, Windows, Macintosh, Solaris, um, there's a few more if I scroll further down. Um, I'm on a Windows box, so I'm going to use Windows. If you're using one of these other operating systems, uh, it's just as easy to use on one of these other operating systems. So I'll click ZAMP for Windows. And why is it called ZAMP? Well, it's just another uh, acronym. The X in ZAMP stands for X, so like any of any operating system you want, Apple, uh, Windows, Linux, Unix, whatever you want. The A stands for Apache, which is our web server. The M stands for MySQL, which is our database server. The first P stands for PHP, and there's two different versions here that you can use. I'm going to use the newer one. And the second P stands for PHP MyAdmin, which is a nice little application that they bundle with it that allows you to uh, maintain both PHP and your uh, database. And then there's another one, Zend Optimizer. Uh, Zend is not included in the name, so I guess they just throw it in there for free. So what we want to do is download the installer. There's a couple different um, methods. There's a ZAMP Lite, and ZAMP Lite strips out some of the uh, extra applications. Uh, for most people, this is probably good enough, but we're going to go ahead and get the, the uh, full one. So I'll click on ZAMP. And there's a couple different options. There's a, an installer that works like any other software you might have installed on a Windows machine. There's a zip version, which will allow you to, you'll have to unzip and set up. And there's a, an executable version too. Um, I usually go with the installer one. The other ones are fine, but I just think the installer one is the easiest. So I'll click installer. And it opens up another page where uh, you can start downloading the file. Okay, so I'll click Save File. This is going to save it to my desktop. And as you can see, the file is 33 megabytes. Uh, so considering that how many applications they have bundled up in here, that's really uh, not that big of a file. Okay, so the file is finished downloading. What I'm going to do is go to my desktop 
And here is the installation file. If you notice, it's uh, installer.exe. So I'll just double click to begin the installation. So it opens up a typical installation wizard. Um, I'm going to click the next button to start. Now you need to pick a location where you want to install the software. Um, you can pick any number of places. You can put it inside my documents. You could put it somewhere on your computer. I'm just going to install it right onto my C drive. So it's going to be in the root of my C drive. So click OK. Then I'll click Next. And there's a few other setup options here. Uh, you want to include a, a desktop icon so you can launch it. You also want to start menu icon so you can go to start programs and launch it. Then there's a couple options here that say services. You can uh, install Apache as a service. And you can install MySQL as a service. And you can install FileZilla, which is an FTP client. Um, I personally don't like installing any of these as a service because if you do, they'll run anytime Windows starts. And if you're not using them, that's just something else running to slow down your computer. So um, I like to manually start them myself. So I'll click install. And it will begin installing all the files and applications that you need to run these systems. Okay, so uh, it's finished installing. I'll click the finish button. And it says, congratulations, the installation was successful. Do you want to start the control panel now? So we do want to start the control panel, so I'll click yes. And being that I did not install anything as a service, we have to manually start the applications. And the order in which they're listed is the order in which you would start them. Uh, so we want to start the web server, the Apache web server. So I'll click start. And if you notice down here, it says Apache is started. Then we want to start the database server. So we'll click start for that. And the other two, FileZilla is an FTP server. Um, this would be if you were on a web server that was really out on the internet, you would want an FTP server running so that you could transfer files back and forth from your own computer out to the server on the web. But this is just right on your home computer anyway, so you don't need that. You can just move the files through like Windows Explorer. And Mercury is the mail server. We're not going to work with that right now. Uh, maybe we'll, we'll take a look at that later, but we'll leave that off for now. So for now, we have uh, everything running that we need. So what we need to do is open up our browser. Uh, you can use whatever browser you want. I'm going to use Firefox because I prefer that. And now, what you want to do is, this is a server that's running locally on your machine. So you want to go HTTP, and then you want to say localhost, and hit enter. And it's going to bring up a page that says ZAMP. So you want to, you have a choice in uh, all these different languages. So I'll click English. And now it says, congratulations, you have successfully installed ZAMP on this system. And there you go. It's running. OK, so now that we have the server installed, where do I go to do things to it? What, what do I do? So if I open up Windows Explorer here, you'll notice the folder got installed on my C drive, ZAMP. And as I open this up, there's uh, lots and lots of folders inside of it. Uh, they all do different things. They all contain different information. But the most important one that you're going to want to look at right now is this one here called htdocs. What htdocs is, is where all the files for your web page will reside. So basically, if you had a, a server, a hosting package on a professional server with some web hosting company, this is the only thing you'd have access to. You'd have access to this htdocs folder. Now, 
there's a bunch of other folders in there and you would be able to start putting your information inside of there. So your web pages, your images, your, your data, anything like that would go inside this 